Could New Jeans overtake BTS and Blackpink as the most popular K-pop group in the Western world ever? Let's talk about it. Yeah, this is going viral right now. The headline reads, New Jeans have secured their place in international music history by becoming the first Asian girl group to chart three songs simultaneously on the Billboard Hot 100 this week. Andrew, only the Pussycat Dolls, En Vogue, and the Shangri-Las, which is like from way back in the day, have ever done it. It's very rare for an Asian group to do this, Andrew, because international music charts uh, is more Western-centric. Woo! First time ever. Three songs at once, guys. We got to talk about this. I know a lot of people out there are big fans of New Jeans. I actually like some of their songs. And you know us. We're not the hugest K-pop fans, but we keep up with it. And I do appreciate it. But I don't know. New Jeans is kind of my group, man. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, guys. Like we said, we are not subject matter experts on K-pop. Uh, K-pop at all, but I've got to say that new song, Shoot, uh, Super Shy, Andrew, is probably, in my opinion, going to be the biggest crossover hit from K-pop, at least to R&B, that I've personally ever seen in my entire life. You know what it is? It's because they said Super Shy. Sup super Shy, I'm Super Shy, Super Shy. Okay, anyways, guys, let's get into it. Um, please let us know in the comments down below what makes New Jeans so popular and so appealing to the Western world. Is it just... It's just over time that there's going to be a K-pop group that really breaks through. Or is this not fully a breakthrough yet? Yeah, well, we got to talk about the checklist of what it takes for an Eastern group to cross over to the West. Anyway, let's just get into some comments real quick. Somebody said, yo, that's wild. I never see any of the girls in new jeans wearing jeans. That's kind of a funny comment. Somebody said, sorry to say, but Super Shy and ETA are not as good as their previous songs, Cookies, Hype Boy, OMG, and Ditto. Now, this turned into a little bit of an argument, Andrew. Some of the older new jeans fans are saying that their new songs sound too American to appeal to them, and it sounds less and less like K-pop. But conversely, that's what is allowing songs like Super Shy and ETA to break the Western charts. Yeah, I mean, I would say even based off the titles of these songs, they could be American songs. Yeah. Like the, the names are kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, slang, and it's cute, cute slang, OMG, hype boy, ditto. Like, I mean, does this happen with any artist, Andrew, that has an original sound, whether it's like Drake being mixtape Drake and then turning into more like club music? You know what I mean? Like mm. J. Cole starting on as mixtapes and then he was making all the, you know, more emo raps. Yeah, as a non-super deep K-pop fan, I look at it like, man, they just crank out a, a K-pop group that can appeal to everybody. You know what I mean? And like, there is a lot of thought process and a lot of training that does go into forming these groups and branding these groups. So I think they, they're doing an amazing job with new jeans. Obviously, BTS had some thinking, Blackpink had some thinking, and they all kind of have their different appeal. I yeah. think it's to a lot of the same market, but it's like for different tastes. And, and they kind of build on it, right? And I think the barriers to entry like uh, drop down lower uh -huh. and lower every generation because I believe we are in the fifth generation of K-pop groups now. Fourth generation was BTS and Blackpink. Andrew, of course, there was some arguing it turned into Blinks versus Bunnies. Bunnies is the uh, New Jeans fandom. Blinks is for Blackpink. Uh, I guess they like beef really hard and this is one of the characteristics of internet k-pop niche fandoms they're like they're, they almost like go to war against each other mm, i wonder if people can be fans of both and then argue with each other and get heated whenever it feels divisive anyways guys uh david real quick what are some of the reasons why new jeans is so popular right now like what are what are people saying like how do people describe new okay jeans? so i had to do some research like i said guys let me know if you agree disagree with me or you have some stuff to supplement i'm sure you guys are much more uh some of you guys at least know way more than me about this um it sounds sort of like H&M background music because there's a lot of like empty lo-fi. Somebody said UK garage influenced uh, hi-hats, fast tempo. Mm. So basically they keep that sound throughout their tracks, especially their newer tracks. And that's what it almost made Super Shy to me sound like Doja Cat. Yeah. So what I noticed is another reason is that they also like don't, also sing too hard like they'll go into some whispers and almost some mumbles which is very trendy right now it sounds like they're not singing too hard versus the kind of classic big vocal k-pop big uh sound like almost like uh like arena arena status sound you right, know what right. I mean? the big runs and the big yeah. like uh almost like stadium status and i think that that's why super shy reminds me so much of doja cat mm. because she doesn't do that either right um i think the truth is andrew new jeans and i'm going to compare it with twice in a second guys you guys couldn't believe that we're analyzing this um it, they shoot a lot of their new music videos in america and the music sounds western right i have noticed that that there is a lot of american people in their videos like white black people like they kind of put themselves in the context of la it and, almost I, seems and like. I believe some of the 
uh, new genes, people actually live for a number of years in Australia or New Zealand. Yeah, they're, and they're, it, there's they're almost English. like a UK Aussie vibe a little bit, right? Their Maybe English even more. fluency is very high, at least for I know a couple of the members can basically speak can speak it natively, right. yeah. Somebody says they have uh, funky, unique dance styles that are easy to mimic, but also look different than other K-pop groups. And it's also their management allows them to be a little bit more loose with their dance moves, other than that ultra robotic, like 10 out of 10 mimicking uh -huh. that almost looks like, you know, to Western people, I'm not saying this is true, but on the downside, that it makes it feel robotic or Vocaloid-like. They they feel way more like loose with Wait, the you dance you mean moves. like when they perform, they don't have to be like 100% perfect. Like army in sync. Like they, they don't need to be that militant. Uh, in like, terms of like people can dance a little bit offbeat like in the choreography just to give it like that more organic vibe yeah people are saying That's that cool. it just new jeans really appeals to non-k-pop fans because it almost has some of that 88 rising hipster asian american uh, mass pop appeal almost like you know what i mean lo-fi the lo-fi vibes could they take some of 88 rising steam yeah yeah i think that they'd be the k-pop group that appeals to the 88 rising crowd mm. uh crowd let's move on uh on to twice andrew twice is a very interesting group because it's a little bit older than new jeans right and uh they also have like a y2k year 2000 aesthetic both in their music videos as well as their music but a little bit different and uh it's interesting because they have nine members three of which are native japanese so actually they sing a lot of lyrics in Japanese, as well as they have songs that are completely in Japanese. So do you think this is the most Japanese K-pop group in the sense that part of their appeal is that it's gonna feed into the weeb culture? Obviously, Japan's market who wants to hear like a yeah. K-pop group that can speak some Japanese. So I heard that pr prior to this in the K-pop industry in South Korea, they had tried to make it crossover with the J-pop market and it did not work until five years ago with Twice. Ooh. It's been the first time they've been able to be uh, the biggest K-pop group in Japan. Yeah. But it makes sense, right? I guess Blackpink also, like Lisa and other people are really fluent in English. And that's a huge part of what allowed Blackpink to enter the English speaking market, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think a lot of Twice's music kind of sounds like uh, some Japanese R&B pop to me, which is like right. very much influenced, Andrew, by Will Smith's like Men in Black from 1997 mm. that sort of like sound is like really really big and um yeah they just got they're both groovy though both new jeans and twice are groovy i think new jeans is even more on trend in 2023 mm -hmm. but i think they're both doing something really interesting and these were the two biggest groups andrew after bts and uh black pink wow um i i want to ask what do you think so obviously like even the wonder girls a lot of Asia, uh, the K-pop female groups have charted before. BTS, nobody, nobody yeah, but BTS being the biggest male group, but I think because BTS is males and they act different than the Western male, that it's always so controversial every time BTS steps on an American stage. Right, right because all, people are like, oh, even in Latin America, some of the media went against them. Yeah, right? there's a whole bunch of tweets and a lot of like chatter about, oh, why do guys look like this? They look like girls, blah, blah, blah. They all look the same. But I feel like when it's a female group, and obviously this is like a difference of how Asian female and Asian men are viewed, where it's like Asian females, they act more like how a lot of global men would want females to act. So in a way, it's more universal. So in right. a way... As You're talking about the floweriness of both the boy yeah. and the girl groups, but flowery girls, it's almost like double femininity exactly. in the West. I would argue that BTS's impact, the change they made, was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, out of any K-pop group ever. But I can see more people accepting like female K-pop groups as like, you know, their own. Like, you know what was interesting? I was doing some research for this video, Andrew. People were saying that male groups survive on ultra hardcore niche cult fan bases where female groups uh, rely on the general public, even in South Korea. Yeah. Like they, they appeal to, they play differently. Yeah. Because, because guys are never going to follow BTS you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. Because, uh, yeah, BTS is basically more polarizing is what right, I'm saying. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, Andrew, speaking about floweriness, there is a Korean Japanese mixed rap group, not twice, called XG right now. And they've been dropping a lot of ciphers. Oh. And uh, like hardcore rap ciphers where one of the rappers is in Japanese, female, and one of them is a female Korean rapper. Um. There is a group called G Idol, Andrew, that reminds me of some pop punk like Avril Lavigne influences. Same with a group called oh. Dreamcatcher. There is a group called La Seraphim that sounds way more like urban hip hop influence. Red Velvet sounds more EDM based, as well as 
as the boy band Stray Kids, TXT. Um, this reminds me of the sound that like C-pop is trying to copy right now, uh -huh. where it's kind of like really like hard, dark, kind of some dark themes in the music videos, but it's still pop music. Um, there's a new group called IVE that sounds like standard K-pop music. Um, there's a group, Andrew, called Itzy that has an Indian girl and a Russian speaker in it too. So they're kind of getting like multinational with it. Wow, man. I, no, I mean... Dude, they are, they got a lot of different groups out there. Yeah. I like the angles. What do you think about how it's like diversifying and it's almost like there's a K-pop group that's influenced by an additional subculture for like every crowd? I mean, I, I think they look at the talent pool that comes in and they see the like, oh, wow, this person and this person could pair up and that would be really interesting. And it's almost like you're cooking a dish. Yeah. Right, you get all these different ingredients, these people who want to enter the K pop industry, whether they're from another country or not. And then you just look at it and you're like, Oh, what can I make with this? And Does then, it remind um, you of rap music? You know how nowadays in 2023, there's like emo rap, there's like goth rap, there's stadium rap, there's obviously yeah. boom bap, a hardcore but, but battle I would rap. Say, like, there's so many sub genres within it. I mean, it's a little different. That's like if all the different types of rap all came out of one singular city, though. Right. Versus right. like K-pop, it comes out of essentially one city. Seoul. Essentially, right? And then so it's like, uh, there. that's why I, it's like a kitchen that can cook all different types of dishes. Versus, you know, going to a neighborhood or a plaza that has different restaurants of different cuisines. It's like one restaurant. Maybe, I don't want to say one Cheesecake restaurant. Cheesecake Factory, it, Andrew. They got Rasta nah, nah, Pasta right. and they got Mandarin salads. All right, sorry, sorry. Let me, it's like a food court. It's like one mall. <laughs> I don't want to say they're all the same restaurant. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, what do you think of our K-pop breakdown? Like I said, I don't know everything. I probably got some stuff wrong, but let me know in the comment section below some final thoughts that I have, Andrew. I think twice. I think the music from New Jeans more ap appeals to me sonically, uh -huh. but uh, I think twice with the Korean Japanese angle is pretty cool because it kind of reminds me of, uh, was that Ko? Or wh which song was it where they had uh, Keith Ape and Ko Cole. and Keith Ape? Yeah, like, yeah Cole, uh, was it, it? It's Jima. I think that was it, Jima. Yeah, right, one of those songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know how what I'm saying? Like, I think that that's pretty interesting. Do you think that you we will see like half Mandarin, half Korean K-pop? Because I think that the Japanese language and the Korean language they do sound more similar, and also grammatically, yeah. it's more the same. There's it's non-tonal. Yeah. Also, but could you see? them chase that market. I mean, pop culturally wise, obviously it makes sense that Koreans and Japanese are closer together as definitely as far as the pop culture goes. No, no, it's true that their tastes are different, but more similar. I think China's just like way different than both yeah, of them. Yeah, it is different. And then also, uh, will we see half Mandarin, half Korean, a big man, half Mando, half Korean pop group? Uh, they tried to do it back in the day with XOM. I, and I believe that's what Chris Wu dude, came out of. Right? I don't doubt that they're trying to do it. But I don't know if it's popped off yet. Right. You know. What do you think of the K-pop fan bases almost being like some Philadelphia sports fans and willing to just like duke it out? I don't, I don't know, never, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it. No, I don't know. I think it's on the internet because I'm like, I'm pretty sure they could like. you never seen Blinks and Bunnies fight in real life. Well, even if they're arguing online, maybe they also are fans of each other too, but they just want to argue. I don't know. They want to be tribal I don't know. in you the guys moment. Let me know. I'm not on those message boards, so I don't know actually how divisive K-pop groups are. What do you think of this accusation? This came from an American uh, music Reddit forum saying K-pop is just 90s and 2000s and 2010s era R&B repackaged in a new language and generation. Nah, I think that's too simplistic, man. I actually don't agree with that. I used to say that 10 years ago about and you, K-pop. And I can see why on the surface level you might yeah, think I that. Think, right? I think eight years ago that was more true. I don't think... I think K-pop runs that type of music now, and I do think they sprinkle in their own unique vibes, and I don't know, you just can't say it. I don't know, you just can't say that anymore. What do you think about this whole new wave that New Jeans could be starting, Andrew? K-pop that doesn't really sound like K-pop with uh, heavy English hooks, all, like maybe four out of five members are fluent in English. Is this good, bad? Are the old K-pop fans going to accept it? Or is it just opening it up to new Western audiences? What do you think? I think it's opening it up to new Western audiences. I think it's just expanding the market. Because think about it. If us as non-super huge K-pop fans like new jeans, that's a good sign. Because at least it might even capture more Asians first. You know, But that it doesn't sound like K-pop. But I like it. 
And, and it's going to appeal to like all different type of people, you know, even like the right. non-K-pop and, and fan. The, and the reason I'm saying it doesn't sound like K-pop is because the beat is much more minimalistic and there's not as many genre switch-ups, whereas I guess typical I like it. standard K-pop, it I, could go through like five genres. I'm in not the same always into that big K-pop sound where they like are on these huge sets and like all this stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't love that personally. Like, I can vibe out to new jeans. I can yeah. just vibe. I think there will be plenty of K-pop that has that standard K-pop sound. David, you know what? Once people start being able to smoke to K-pop songs, you know what I mean? Like that kind of smoking music, that's going to be, that's going to open up the market too. Wow. I'm just letting you know. Um, What do we think about C-pop and the status of Chinese music, Andrew? Obviously, we know that the Chinese music scene is way less westernized. There's way less American, British influence than uh, Japan and Korea. It's sort of like really still in the love ballad stage. It's almost like Khalil Fong, you know what I mean? Or uh, there's this another guy called uh, Crowd Lu. This is still sort of where it's at. People are still listening to old Jay Chow and Boba Shops yeah. from like 15 years ago. It just feels like... It's it, the artists make a lot of money domestically, but nobody outside of chi nah. uh, like China likes them. You know, actually, where I see it being at because there actually are some good artists. Sometimes I'll talk to like an international student, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'm listening to blah blah blah." Like check out this song, and I'm like, "Oh, this song is really good." But you know what it is? The whole lifestyle and culture behind it is not there. Right? Like you, you're just saying they can't sell the image. There's cool Chinese artists. But like a lot of Chinese Americans and even Chinese students out here, they're not like repping for them that hard. You know what I mean? Like they're not like, like sometimes you'll hear about a concert in New York or New Jersey that's actually a big Chinese pop concert, but it's not that big compared to a K-pop concert. Not everybody's talking about it. And it's nobody outside of the Chinese market, right? Yeah, China or Taiwan yeah. or so Singapore. I just think like maybe it didn't infect the Chinese youth as much so that the Chinese youth is not like, acting like C-pop right. artists, you know what I mean? Once kids start taking on that yeah. identity, then it becomes this whole scene. I would say Jackson Wang is the only Chinese pop artist that I f feel like is it sounds competitive or more similar to Korean yeah. music, but obviously he was trained in Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People know about Jackson Wang. He's probably the most crossover artist right now. Um, What do we think? Finally, Andrew, I just want to compare this with the Spanish market. There's 600 million Spanish speakers, you know, due to uh, Spain as well as colonization. There's about 80 million Korean speakers globally, but 26 of that 80 million are in North Korea. That leaves about 54 million in terms of a viable native audience for music. There's 1.3 billion Mandarin speakers, but like we said, that, you know, the tastes and the cultural leanings right now are just way too traditional or just differently. And, um, yeah, it's just an interesting place where we're at right now, right? New jeans, top three in the top 100, Andrew. Dude, do they continue? I think so. I think so, especially if they can have verses in English and uh, verses in, like, obviously the hooks right now are in English. Yo, they're just going to get some big American features. They're going to be good. All right, everybody, let us know in the comments down below what you think about new jeans. You are watching the Hot Pop Boy. Oh, who's another K-pop group that's coming up that that we might like or that you like that sounds a little bit different, I'd be interested to check them out. So let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.